the best chance. How about you build it? Let me write it on it. Thank you, the post frame. Well, on the average shot times for Ronnie this season, Tep Chari second, Ronnie O'Sullivan third. Young Jamie Wilson, the new pro, is in fact number one, but uh, we don't expect this to be slow. It should be very entertaining. The winner plays John Higgins or Ding Jun Wee. They, they are yet to get going. O'Sullivan uh, didn't necessarily impress against Matthew Stevens, who missed a lot of chances against him. But he's still here, and that makes him as dangerous as ever. Tep Chaya has come through pretty comfortably, it's got to be said. He beat Peter Devlin 4-2, Fergal O'Brien 4-1, Alan Taylor this morning 4-0. Yes, it'd be hard not to look forward to a match of this kind, this kind of likely furious pace that they'll be playing at. Although Ronnie was a little bit more methodical early than maybe Tep Chaya is. Circumstances, perhaps. Tep Chaya's had a lot of matches away from the match table. So you have to acclimatise to the conditions. I'm not sure how the others are playing. Seemingly on the, some of the break building today may be better, but... I said earlier on this table yesterday we had a 147 and various other big breaks. Anyway, interesting game. Guys in the studio talking about the, the World Championship match. They had played once before that in a German Masters qualifier in Barnsley. Tep Chai won 5 4. Sullivan, I uh, don't think, particularly wanted to be there and played all out attacking snooker and came a cropper, but uh, he's been very disciplined actually this week. <coughs> yeah, and of course, while that match, Six. the facts are Tip Chai won, and people thought that maybe he could do the same at the Crucible. It was a non event, really, that Seven. match. It was uh, maybe the glimpse into what we were about to see for the next two and a half weeks of Sullivan playing well. But Tip Chai's game looks suited to everything O'Sullivan likes. A fast player, gives you chances. If he's going to beat you, he's going to win frames quickly. I don't think Ronnie minds all that. Players that drag him down a bit are the ones he's had most difficulty with. Twelve. Remember, this Northern Ireland Open, each of the last two years, the final has been Judd Trump against Ronnie O'Sullivan. Could it be the third year running? Of course, they are in separate halves. It would, of course, uh, it's a long way to go yet, but it would be their first meeting since O'Sullivan became world champion again. Yeah, there's definitely a few players standing in their way because the Yan Bing Tao Zhao Jin Tong match is ongoing. They're three all. And it's anybody's in the decider. There's uh, two very good players, very different Chinese players actually in style. I think Zhao Jin Tong is quite close to a new way that he plays. Well, we have had another result. Ali Carter has beaten Ben Wollaston. We saw Wollaston beat Neil Robertson. But uh, that was last night. But Carter has come through 4-2. They beat Dominic Dale earlier. So some good wins for Ali Carter. He's probably uh, under the radar <laughs> man, isn't he, for the week? You know, yeah. Just seeing his results coming through and... Top player, Masters finalist this year. Well, very and 20. Uh, Strange, because the plant Five. seemed to go straight in as if it was set. And I don't know if that's the case. Let's have another look here. In fairness, it, there's an argument that Ronnie could have foreseen that happening. Well, let's see if Tep Charanu can take advantage. Of course, he's in the top 16 now. He's number 15 in the world. 
So only the second Thai player to get into the elite group after the great James Watanart. That means that he's in Six. line to appear at the Masters in January. A lot of the points raised about Tepchaya is something a little death defying about the way he plays. He takes on the big shot even when he doesn't need to, just goes out all, all out to win. Although it doesn't appear he's on the black, he's certainly shaking his head. And be tight Has to play it with right hand side to make the pot available. If he hesitates on any shot, there must be something difficult because he really does. Just knocks them in. 50. It's a good shot as well, queuing over a ball. Yeah, I was just watching a lovely interview he did on uh, Bayswatch, Watch, the World Snooker magazine show. And uh, just talking about how he discovered snooker, started playing at 13. He said he wasn't sure, though, it was for him. And at the age of 16, a friend of his entered him into a competition. He didn't want to play in it because he didn't think he was good enough. But he got entered into it, did pretty well, started to get the, the bug for snooker. He said he didn't know any of the top players. He wouldn't recognise an O'Sullivan or Hendry, but he got a coach who sat him down and gave him a load of Ronnie O'Sullivan videos to watch. He said, this is the sort of level you want to try and get to. And Ronnie became his hero as a result. And now here he is playing him. Top two one. But he's starting to crank things up here. The other thing about him is you think of him as a, you know, an upstart, really, Top as a player. He's 35. You know, he's not, he's not a, a kid coming through. He's been around a while. Always managed to play the, the game in the same way. I think maybe because of his style, you think he as a youthful player. He won the World Amateur title 2008, came over the following year to play on the, uh, the Pios tour, which was a sort of challenge tour in effect in Prestatin. Bit of a culture shock coming what from Thailand to a North Wales holiday camp. But he did pretty well and you know, he's kept on improving, hasn't he? Very dangerous, the way he plays. And what a chance here to win this opening frame in no time at all after the Fifty bit of misfortune for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Once the red colour, the two reds don't really come into play 55. until the snookers are required. Might still play the cannon. I don't think he, I don't think he knows any other way. Brilliant. 62. I don't know whether Ronnie looked at that, you know, that, that when he knocked the red in up. It seemed set to the pocket from the overhead. I don't know whether we went and had a look and it didn't appear onto him or he just didn't look and it went in. Of course, it's bad luck if you do knock a red in, but not if it's the banging line. It's something that you can avoid happening. Well, this break is three and a half minutes. And it's won him the frame, and this is what he's capable of. Seventy-six. He was hard at first. He had a, a wife and young daughter back in Thailand. Didn't see them for months on end, but a couple of years ago moved them over here with his son as well now. So much happier in himself because he's based at the Q House Academy in Darlington. Got a good base. He's playing the Mark Williams shot here. Eighty-one. He wouldn't want to waste time getting the rest out or anything, would he? <laughs> <laughs> Working on his average shot time, he wants to shave a couple of seconds off it. 55. So, last three balls, but and he's no, opened no, up with a century. Oh, he's missed the blue. It's a shame. But 85, and that was a quick kill, wasn't it? One chance, and he pounced. So, Thailand speed king, Tepchara Nu off and running, leading Ronnie O'Sullivan, 1-0.
Wow. Wow. Brown and Sullivan 20. Let me try it out now. Wow. Wow. Brown and Sullivan 20. Let me try it out now. Five. Welcome back, playing for quarter-final places. Tepchar and News won the first round against Ronnie O'Sullivan. It was a good 85. It came from a bit of misfortune, though, nil for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yeah, it did. I mean, uh, as I say, it's gone straight in. So there maybe was a way to avoid it. You know, sometimes two or three balls will hit each other and you could never He's predict. I'm just making the point that uh, players will inspect the bunch of reds very often to see if there is a way that things could go wrong. I'm not sure whether Ronnie did. Well, it cost him. It was a lovely break, wasn't it, from Tepchaya. Just missed the blue to be denied the chance of a century, but you can see that uh, he's already adapted to his first match here on the main table. I think, actually, he may have played an earlier round, one of the morning matches on it, but even so, he's playing Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's a different story. Yan Bing Tao has beaten Zhao Jingtong in the battle of the two young Chinese, 4-3. Kurt Mafflin has beaten Egil Figueredo 4 1. So Mafflin plays Ali Carter next in the quarterfinals. Well, Immediate chance here. One. First time he played at the Crucible, he drew John Higgins and, and was beaten. And then he qualified the following year and talked about how difficult a draw it was to draw Higgins at the Crucible, how hard he found it. Press said to him, who do you want to draw this year then? He said John Higgins. <laughs> I don't know why. Of course, he ended up drawing Trump, Judd yeah. Trump, and very nearly beat him. That could have been a different story for Judd Trump. Lost 10-9, uh, Tepchire, but was a little unlucky in that decider. And then this year, he drew O'Sullivan. So he's, at the Crucible, he's played Higgins, Trump, and O'Sullivan. The trouble is, as a qualifier, you're always going to draw somebody, aren't you, that's a uh, top player? Some are more difficult than others, though, as you rightly point out. Just lost his way there, so having to settle for safety. David Grace has beaten Michael Holt 4-3. Holt was 3-0 up there. So that's a great comeback from the Leeds man. He plays Yambing Town next. Former UK semi-finalist David Grace. And a massive, massive, massive snooker fan. 
I know they all are, but he really is. Put it this way, when he played at the Crucible, he had his name on the dressing room door and he actually took the sign with his name on and put it on his bedroom door at home. Oh, I miss. Yep, no. oh. Well, it's safe to say Ronnie didn't play at his absolute best earlier. He had a, a bad middle section yes. of the match with Matthew, Matthew Stevens, which really Matthew should, for the world, have been three one of him. It's a pretty simple black left handed. The final black got through. He hasn't really built on that form yet. I know he got in first and knocked the red in, but two shots already in this frame. He's misjudged the safeties. So, at the moment, Anu is playing the better snooker, or he's settled better, one of the two. Anu. <laughs> Played it with left hand side to play the cue ball down into that corner. You don't really think that you're gonna, the cue ball's gonna go all the way in. You couldn't play the shot to go in off if you tried. One. I think when you play Tip Chaya, if he is able to dominate, and he can absolutely just run through a match so quickly, reminding me so much of Tony Drago, who actually contacted me today, an avid snooker watcher, watching all the matches. Good to hear from him, actually, because he's doing a lot better health-wise than he was maybe 18 months ago. Anyway, Sullivan has been led off there. Yeah, second chance in this frame. Pink stays out. Yes, if you're watching now, Tony, hello from me as well. Hope you're doing well. What a unbelievably fast player. Never slowed down, did he? All the years he was on the tour, never got any slower. Um, I maintain, Dave, that uh, what? as brilliant as Tup Chaya is and as quick as he is, when Tony was a young man coming through, he was the quickest player I've ever seen. I can't imagine anyone that has ever been quicker. It was lightning watching him go around the table, win three frames in quarter of an hour. Yeah, well, he still holds the record for the fastest ever frame, three minutes. Six. Oh, Sullivan, of course, no slouch in that department either. Happy to get another chance in this frame, the way Tepchar took the first one out. Seven. Bad on the red, but he's got very good queuing. Push the cue ball up the table a little bit here for a lower value oh. colour. Oh, this is where Sullivan's cue ball is, is always a very strong point. Look where he's finished, absolutely bang on the blue, with nothing to do for the next red. 18. Twenty-seven. 
the reds are a little bit blocking each other off. There are one, there is one that goes four up, as you can see. Once again, he's now That's finding beautiful. his touch in amongst them. Spen, of course, releases other reds. Up to five. judged and to make sure you give it a, a fraction extra now he's gone a, a little too far there what right about finishing short I think and not being on this red Now maybe the Dup Chai break inspired O'Sullivan, that 85, which probably should have been a century, because Ronnie was actually watching him in intently throughout. Well, Tep Chai has had two scoring chances in this frame, neither came to much. Lost position first time and then second time missed that pink to the right middle. Fifty-seven. Yeah, they both made a, they made a mistake each, which has, has been punished. It's a pretty good game, isn't it? Ready. Pretty good shot as well. Sixty-two should be enough. Red colour and frame is in favour of the world champion. Sixty-three. Yes, this match has a sort of kill or be killed quality to it, doesn't it? We have Tetchar and New, who's improved a lot in the last couple of years, and we have Ronnie O'Sullivan, who, for the last three decades, has been brilliant. 71. Seventy-eight. Seventy-nine. Leo Scully and the referee as well being kept on his toes, but I suspect referees prefer matches like this than the uh, the real grinds. Go on for hours. Well, one of the great sights in sport, a Ronnie O'Sullivan century. And there's another one for the collection. And a timely one as well. And as I say, Tep Chaya, he had a couple of chances early in this frame. Didn't take them. Ronnie O'Sullivan has stepped in. Yeah, I think very much a confidence booster for O'Sullivan. I know that sounds odd, but as I say, he's not been at his best today. Always very far away from your best, certainly in this case. Very nice break. Yeah, a swift 106. 
And in just 21 and a half minutes, we've already had two frames played here. Ronnie O'Sullivan and Tep Chara knew a level at one each. So it's one all, Tepchar 85, O'Sullivan 106. Remember, this is to get to the quarterfinals of the Northern Ireland Open. That was the missed pink from Tepchar. And O'Sullivan uh, just stepped in, didn't he? And as I say, just glorious to watch when he's playing well. The winner plays Ding Jin Wee or John Higgins. That'll be a fascinating match, whoever comes through. They're yet to get going, though. In fact, they're just getting underway, I think. He's got Donaldson 1 4 2. He was the point where Nopon Sankam needed snookers, got them all uh, and 3 2 down, but Donaldson won it on the, I think the pink at the end, so he's through now to play Trump. Another player much improved in recent years, Scott Donaldson, of course, won Championship League last season. And nearly beat Mark Allen in the Champion of Champions, because Allen went on to win the title. Yeah, it turned out to be his hardest match, didn't it? By the odd frame. One. No, that was beautiful. That's, uh, there have been times in the last decade of O'Sullivan, even when he's been at his brilliant best, the long pots have not always been going in, but he seems to have found a way of getting them back. You know, as a 16 year old when he first turned pro, he spell spellbinding long potter. But it often is the one thing that can desert you as a player through age, but he's, he's reversed that trend. Beautifully struck. I think remember when Steve Davis just started to play a little differently, you know, into his thirties when the maybe the Halcyon days were gone, <laughs> his long game went. He was still good at close range. But his long game was not the same. Six. Twenty one. It's a calculated risk. I think anyone learning the game, learning the break building, watching the 
decision making of O'Sullivan and amongst them is to make you a better player. Very Missed that one by a long way. He got the reds open, but left himself a bit straight on that red. And he was leapt up very quickly as soon as he hit it. Very Sullivan, 28. First one he's missed for a little while. One. It's for Tepchaya to hit him on the attack. Now that the chance has come his way. Well, he was always a little concerned about that red just on the top cushion. It slightly hampered him. Could be costly, that miss. And Ronnie was One. out of his chair <laughs> before the ball just stopped rolling. He was, he was thinking it was time to go. As I say, I, I think the one thing about uh, Sullivan playing Tepchaira knew... Nine. Ronnie is very happy to be at the table you know, very quickly after the last time. Whatever his opponent has done, he, he loves a fast tempo match. I don't think he loses many of these sort of games. Sixty. Yeah, if you're going to take him on at his own game, you've got to outplay him, which is obviously easier said than done. Well, this match has only been going 27 minutes, but O'Sullivan closing in and on a 2 1 lead. 21. Twenty-eight. Interesting choice of shot to screw into the red and the pink there. I don't quite know what his intentions were, but it wasn't quite that. the black goodness this is a, a tough shot he won't mind that nudge he might get a clap but he's not as good as even he's not good enough to play that cannon I guess he felt with the red on the book cushion that even though the black wasn't guaranteed it was a risk worth taking and it looks like it's one in this frame Freewheeling, isn't he? As I say, he, he's always been the same. Anything like any match like this, where he can just point his cue, see ball, pop ball, bit of windy pops again. For <laughs> Sullivan tonight. Well, he was saying, wasn't he? He's had the stomach issues. Indeed. Hope he's okay. Playing all right. <clears throat> but again, it's come from. A mistake from his opponent. It was a miss pink from Tepchar in the previous frame, a miss blue to the green pocket in this frame. 50 feet. And as I say, you know, he plays the open game himself, but he's going to have to play it better than Ronnie O'Sullivan tonight to win. And that means not making those errors. 60. Got Leo Scully on, on the hop, hasn't he, there? Sullivan, 60 and He's done enough to win the frame. So another swift break. 
a 60 from Ronnie O'Sullivan following the Miss Blue from Tipshire and New. And in just under half an hour, we've already had three frames here. This is what we expected from these two. But crucially, it's advantage. Ronnie O'Sullivan is leading 2-1. Welcome back. It's 2-1 to Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's had breaks of 106 and 60. Tepchar and Numad 85 in the first. The other match uh, that's uh, still to be concluded is just beginning. John Higgins and Ding John Wee. And, of course, whoever wins that one will come through to play either O'Sullivan or Tepchar. So it's a cracking match whoever comes through. The next frame, I guess, is a big one. We know that Judd Trump will play Scott Donaldson. Yan Bing Tao will play David Grace. And Ali Carter will play Kurt Mathlin. They're the other... Confirm quarterfinals. So a uh, real interesting mix of established names, tournament winners and also players there looking to make a breakthrough win a ranking title. Of course, Tep Chai did that at the shootout in 2019. A format that was almost made for him, really, with the shot clock. Three and four. Tep Chai out and no to break. Well, he's missed a couple that have cost him, a pink and then a blue. Yes, he's still in the game, Tip Chaya, and he, he will, he's likely to get chances. Although, of course, against O'Sullivan, he'll probably get one chance, perhaps. Two is pushing it. The frame, perhaps. Here's one already. Yeah, he's only actually missed two balls, but those two balls cost him two frames. One. Having said that, he missed that blue in the uh, in the first frame, didn't he, when he was on for the century? So he must have missed more than two. Doesn't want to miss too many more, I guess.
yeah, I think the always would be a more or as relevant as that would be. You know, the balls you miss in actual live play because you'll see someone could make a century, miss something playing a crowd shot. So not really a reflection of how he's playing. It's the ones that you miss when the frame is still in the balance, I think that mean more. Maybe there's a way of sorting that stat out. I know that uh, Gary Wilkinson has some involvement in compiling these stats because former tour player knows the game very well. Very good player, Gary. And the world match play. Back in the day, Gary Wilkinson. The final of that was over best of 35. Same as the world final. Certainly a, a lot of frames. 14. Yeah, Jim, Jimmy actually beat Stephen Hendry in the final over best of 35 in the world match play. Meanwhile, Leo Scullion got to get the black. Can't touch the red. Yeah, the shorter format in snooker is you know, it's frowned upon at first. We've got very used to best of sevens now. A period of time when ranking events, it's almost like best of nine was the absolute minimum you could play. The shootout being one, which Tepchaya, former winner. Really have to play any different to his normal speed. Anyway, a chance to go into the bunch here. Watch for plants. It might go in. Beautiful. Deserves to be on something. Lovely shot. Well, if you could buy a split, you'd pay good money for this, wouldn't you? What a chance then. 29. Take any safe route there up for the blue. Found the gap to get on the black. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Of course, he had that agonising moment in the UK Championship a few years ago when he missed the last black. From maximum did the same in the world qualifiers but he has since had a couple in tournament play thankfully i think it's the sort of player that if you find out he's playing you're going to make an effort to watch him 44. The theory is that the first shot you see is the right shot anyway. I mean, occasionally there'll be a need to change your mind. But I think Tep Chai has really taken that theory to the, to the max. And he has time to see one shot. Fifty-nine. Gentle cannon here on the, the middle red in that little cluster. Not with any great speed. Beautiful again. It wasn't a difficult 67. cannon to be fair, but he still played it well. Sixty-seven. So in the blink of an eye, it's frame ball for two-two. Seventy-four. 
75. Again, Leo Scullion is one of the Keystone cops going <laughs> around the table. I think it's speeded up. <laughs> 82. 83. Ninety. Ninety-one. That's great to watch, isn't it? What a sight. Plays with a lot of, kind of hits the ball with a bit of joy and a bit of as if he always enjoys playing. It's, it's not always enjoyable if you're not maybe at your best or you're a bit worried about. Playing the world champion. Oh, what a, a shame. shame. No century, but 98 in absolutely no time at all. And this match is just great viewing. A shame he didn't make the century there. We'd like to have seen that. But he's won the frame. And this match now finally poised. Level 2-2. Two -two. It's 2 2. It's Tim a terrific Chai. match, this. Tep Chaya with that 98 to level up. Best of seven, remember, to reach the quarterfinals of this Northern Ireland Open. There's strange times. We're playing this, of course, in Milton Keynes, but the snooker remains as compelling as ever. message today from someone Dave I don't even know if you'll know the answer to this it's an extraordinary thing to think of there's been more competitive frames played at Milton Keynes than at the Crucible and if there is they haven't when will that happen it's a bit of a as you can see that you've been suitably mind numbed over that it's one it's a bit late in the evening isn't it for things like that it's I mean there's been a lot played it. There's been a lot played. I don't think we'd be there yet, though, would we? I wouldn't have thought. We can't be yet. No, it won't be that long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people think of some things, don't they? Three odd years, whatever it is. Crucible, 43 years. Anyway, for another time. Well, there could yet be, of course, mo a lot more snooker. We've got the UK Championship, the Scottish Open, the World Grand Prix this year. Who knows? about the Masters and tournaments next year, we'll see. John Higgins has won the first frame against Ding Jun Wee. By the way, if you're joining us tomorrow, as hopefully you will be, 12 o'clock, so we're on air earlier. First match, Judd Trump, Scott Donaldson. That's followed by Ali Carter against Kurt Mafflin in the afternoon. One of those shots where he didn't really want to go for it, but he can't leave it over the pocket. But he could felt as if getting on a colour was going to be a tough one. And at first sight, I thought maybe something that might go to the left middle, but clearly not. He'd have seen it. What's he doing here?
He has looked at about 10 different options so far. None of them that he particularly likes. Back on this thing where he's on about, he's looking at elevating the butt of the queue and just spinning back to the black cushion for a second. Whether he can do that or not. Double, double to the left middle. Well, we expected, of course, I mean, these two are right up there, second and third on the average shot time, so we expected it to be quick. It has been. These are the average shot times as it stands. Tepchire, <laughs> 15 and a half seconds. O'Sullivan, around 17. One. I was interested in what you said about that uh, Jamie Wilson actually being the quickest. Of course, it's a very small sample size. Not played many matches, but he is quite an exciting One. player. Albeit not backing out with a lot of victories, but he's a player that's got something. Very young player. One for the future. Anyway, he's off again here. Well, he looks composed, doesn't he? He put together a nice break in the last frame. That green, I mean, that was a, a little pressure shot because he was always playing down for reds. So, as you say, back in. Twelve. Remember, as I said earlier, part of his education was watching Ronnie O'Sullivan videos. He's his snooker idol. But that all goes out the window when you're out there. You've got to focus on what you're doing. Bridge hand is not look comfortable. He's got over it. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Never accused of uh, over-analyzing shots like some players do. Really not his style. Points his cue and plays the shot. Yeah, OK here, it must be tight. He can just get to that bottom red. Not much room. Maybe he has to just turn it with a bit of left-hand side. Sometimes on a shot like this, he must take a fraction more time. He's looking at a different option. Forty-seven. Over the left hand side, hold for the black. Forty 
Ty Snooker then has a new star, James Watanar it was, who led the way. Late 80s into the 90s was uh, world number three, won three ranking titles, famously made a 147 at the British Open. Very bittersweet day for him. It was the day that his father was killed in back in Bangkok. But this is the new generation, and what an exciting talent. 45. And of course, Nopin Senkarm came very close to joining him, lost out 4 2 to Scott Donaldson this evening. measured little 59. cannon there it's where you kind of look at the break time and four minutes and a few seconds and he's almost won the frame Yeah, the longest frame in this match so far was frame two. That was 12 and a half minutes. It's the longest frame. So a couple of balls away from going back in front. Of course, he won the first frame. Oh, he's missed that one. Wow. Just needed the black as well. Joe, no, 60. Well, it's one of those. If Sullivan can pop this red and get in, it might be a costly miss. Too early to say he'll win the frame, but should he do so, it would hurt that man sitting there. Eight. He missed a very easy red there. Be wrong to say he rushed it, because it's clearly that's how he plays all the no. time. You can't have it both ways. Just came out of nowhere. Sixty. Whether he clears or not, he'll read the signs of the importance of him doing so if he can get this clearance. It'd uh, be quite a serious blow to Tepchara and his chances of beating him. But there's a lot of work to do. The next couple of shots are not easy. Even this cut back red. careful with the amount of points he takes here. I don't think he can afford too low a value colour. Six points to play with. He's just checking that out. I think if he plays on the blue, that will be more than enough. But should he take anything lower in value than he is running a bit low on reserves on how many points he can afford to drop? Just a little pause. Sometimes a good idea to take stock of situation. Okay. Well, 
worth the wait. It was a good shot that. He's got a little angle here. And he may have the angle to move the red. Oh, what a delight. Absolutely delightful shot. The shot before on that one in a row. Magnificent. So that missed red to the right middle from Tepchara New looking now like a big mistake. As I say, just came out of nowhere. He's going so well, looking so confident. He's got to finish this off now, and that was a nice shot with left hand reverse screw. Everything's available. We just got to join the dots, really. All the momentum was with the tie. Let's turn round. I don't think Ronnie's entirely comfortable out there. Lots of, lots of uh, grunting and groaning and. Now you hear him again, deep breaths. Fifty-two. Still pulling the balls, not reflected in what he's doing on the table. Fifty-seven. This clearance is why Ronnie O'Sullivan is a great champion. Sixty-three. Yes, he's pounced and punished the error. A big error from Tepchar. This frame should have been his. And the frame. Broke down on 66, missing that red. Ronnie O'Sullivan has stepped in with a killer clearance of 70, and Ronnie O'Sullivan is one away from victory, leading 3-2. Well, this is a, a pulsating contest, but Tepchara knew must have reflected there. He should be in front. 
just fell short. This was the ball, that red on 66. He only needed the black, which he was nicely on. No, Sullivan would have needed snookers. Ronnie O'Sullivan, as Neil says, like the great champion, he is stepped in, made a 70 clearance. He leads 3-2. He'll be in our studio if he wins. If you want to send any questions, queries to him or any other members of the team, the hashtag is Home Nations. By the way, John Higgins and Ding Jun Weir won each. Ding won the second frame after Higgins won the first. Could be O'Sullivan Higgins tomorrow night. We'll see. telling frame last one it was going the way of Tep Chaya you know, when you're sitting in your chair you think maybe well I'm not going to get a chance this frame and then all of a sudden something comes up and you've got to be ready for it and that is where champions are separate from the rest really shot. Shot. not meaning that uh, it wasn't a good shot <laughs> over screwed but Ronnie O'Sullivan would have realised the importance of making that clearance in the context of this fairly short match. Ronnie O'Sullivan, please. Wait. Tip Chai with another early chance back. Definitely not entirely comfortable, is he, out there? Ronnie O'Sullivan, please. Now if that was a pain or whether he was just annoyed. One. Now the question is, what has Tep Chai got to, to find a way to recover from that? He's been thinking about Eight. the ready mist all the way through that O'Sullivan clearance. Nine. Give that plenty to get the cue ball out into a where he thought he'd be on one, but he's unlucky to hit the cushion. It's one of these, it's a little close to the in off in the right corner, I think. If he plays it slowly. It's okay, good shot. 14. Good recovery. Fifteen. as he's not missed a lot tonight but what he has missed has been really costly and if he misses again it could be end of match good game of snooker this Thank though you. Dave isn't it these two we expected it to be good and it is living up to it oh definitely yeah 23. this is a, of course it's a game it's a professional sport it's also entertainment and this match is really entertaining And both players pot success rate into the 90s. Both playing pretty rapidly as well. At that speed, the cue ball is likely to arc away from the, the reds, and I think that's what happened. Place for the cue ball to finish. Played slower, he might have got the bunch open there. Cue ball is racing. Happening now. Got some refreshments. Uh,
Yeah, he's, uh, he quite likes to have some hot water sometimes in his corner. Might not have time to drink it though because uh, he's in here in the frame he needs to win the match as he switches to his left hand. Of course we saw Matthew Stevens do that against him in a big moment in their match this afternoon. Frame four, Matthew looking to go 3-1 up rather, rather than get the rest out, switched hands, missed the black, lost the frame, lost the match. Sullivan's changed his mind, taking the green with the rest. Yes, pretty good decision by the looks of things. Five. So it's a chance to get this wrapped up. Shire desperately hoping for another chance. Shake of the head there. Probably just thinking about a couple of shots that have got away, but probably that red more than ever in the previous frame. But a little bit uh, disconsolate there. Not lost yet, but of course it's out of his hands at this stage with O'Sullivan in. Very business-like in the tournament, hasn't he, Ronnie O'Sullivan? He's saying this afternoon he's enjoying just being out there playing. But he's also competing hard in all departments. This has been a much more flowing match than the one with Matthew Stevens. Yeah, there was an element of frustration in some of these home nations, I think, the way that he played, some of the shots he played against players he felt he would beat. Maybe now that he's world champion again, he, he just views everything a little differently. Well, despite all the shocks and surprises, we still have a potential Trumpo Sullivan final for the third year running. There's a lot of players, plenty to say about that. But it's still on, and Ronnie O'Sullivan getting closer to putting himself in the last eight. Well, the red on the right cushion is so much in play and of course he will need it he's only just going to go in front when he pots his next ball if he could, could consider moving it here I don't know if this loses a bit of control of the cue ball if he does play that Considering playing that and moving the red out, but it's not a certainty you'll end up playing that. Nothing else in mind now. Not as if the red is impossible to get on as a right-hander that he is. Playing time for this match has just ticked past an hour. What is it? <laughs> oh, this is almost crunch time in this break and potentially in the match. Well, that's not very easy to pot from where it's finished up. Only 19 in front. Tepchaya must think there's a little bit of hope. Ronnie might take this red on, but it's not easy. Up into the top right. Four. 
Very resolved in 52. Close. Well, it was match over, pretty much guaranteed had this gone in, but it stayed out. Very resolved. Uh, they have mixed feelings for Tep Chai. Of course, pleased to be back at the table, but not pleased to be in a snooker. No, Ronnie with another chance. Again, not easy. get to pot this yeah he can pot this it's a thin one and he's a long way away from it One. late opportunity has arisen here right in between shots One. right in between he's a very attacking player but he's between shots here. Not easy. Tip out in new point. I think that's it. And, uh, he just feels always compelled to take these shots on, and, and that was a nasty little shot to be involved with, really, at that stage of a match. Of course, if it goes in, probably wins in the frame, and that's how he views things. It's a good attitude, but it might not be the way forward as things stand. Yellow and green yeah. required. Frame five was huge, wasn't it? Tep Shire was looking a million dollars, but just missed that red to the right middle. A couple of balls from securing the frame. Five. Sullivan made a wonderful clearance. And Ronnie O'Sullivan's going to be in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Terrific game. There was never going to be anything else, these two. They played with such fun, such uh, sort of vigour and enjoyment. It's, it's very easy viewing, isn't it? No. It was terrific viewing. Tep Chai and these two snookers. So all over. Yep, indeed. Game set match. Ronnie looking a little uncomfortable, but played pretty well, all things considered. Part of the important ones, Dave. Yeah, made the important clearance, didn't he? It was a terrific match. Great viewing. Tep Chara knew more than played his part, but it's Ronnie O'Sullivan into the quarterfinals. He's beaten Tep Chara new. 4-2.